Tonight, we shall be diving into the steel sector and Nigeria's mining potentials. One area a lot of the experts have said that uh, if the Tunubu government could make some reasonable mark, it's going to be in the steel sector. But tonight, there is a sad scenario, just like in so many sectors of Nigeria, for 45 years. There is a, perhaps one of the most expensive infrastructural a development project that Nigeria has embarked upon. We had an initial $1 billion or so uh, that was uh, here, Mark, 1979. Um, and 45 years later, that project has not produced any steel. And that is a Jakuta Steel Company of Nigeria. Now, it's been through several legal contract issues and several production problems. Every year, there are budget allocation to Ajakuta, yet not a single steel has been produced out of that. Well, the Tunubu government uh, has uh, created the Steel Development Ministry, and they've said they, will, uh, they are taking steel development seriously, and they're looking into reviving the Ajakuta steel development. A lot of experts have their own uh, issues regarding steel production, especially as it concerns Ajakuta. Can that curse of for the five years be upturned under this government. I'm being joined tonight by the Honorable Minister of Steel Development, Prince uh, Shoaib Abubakar Aoudou. He joins us live here in our studio. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for joining us. Thank tonight. you very much, Sean. Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much. You are in a ministry that a lot of people will say, what a ministry, in the sense that uh, a lot of people have, have called Ajakuta a cursed project for 45 years. A lot of Nigerians who are watching are young people who were not who were born at that at the time I've heard about Ajakuta, but the sad scenario and the sad story is that Nigeria has not benefited one kobo out of Ajakuta. What exactly is the problem? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sheon. A happy New Year to you once again. Um, let me start by congratulating the President and Commander-in-Chief for the Armed Forces Remembrance Day today. Um, a lot of uh, Nigerian uh, soldiers, gallant men and women, have given their lives through the Civil War the First World War, Second World War, and all the banditry and terrorism that has been going on uh, for the uh, interests of Nigeria. So I want to wish um, Nigerians and the Armed Forces a happy Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Um, back to Ajokuta, you are correct. Um, it's been a project that has been ongoing for about four and a half decades, uh, 45 years. Um, it's a difficult task that um, so many successful, successive governments have failed to be able to produce steel. However, the president, as a visionary, has taken a different perspective. He understands that no nation can develop without steel. Um, if you look at the um, US and the UK, they had their own industrial revolution in the early 1900s. And um, the fact of the matter is that if we get it right, um, this could be the beginning of the industrial revolution in Nigeria and Mr. President understands that under the Renewed Hope agenda. I think there are three things that Mr. President is looking to do in Ajokuta through um, the Steel Development Ministry, um, which he created in August 2023 and appointed me as the Minister of the uh, Steel Development Ministry. Um, number one is that there are 44 production units, production plants in Ajokuta. It's a massive project. It's a massive plant sitting on about 24,000 hectares of land, which is bigger than the size of Abuja, um, to put in, in perspective. Um, about 800 hectares, um, the plant sits on about 800 hectares of that um, uh, uh, land. Land space. Yes, of that land space. Um, so Mr. President has said that as opposed to using a big bang approach, and trying to tackle all the problems at once. Let's use a collegiate system and address the problem in piecemeal. So there are a number of things that we're looking to do uh, very quickly. One is to start the production of um, iron rods. So we want to revitalize the um, light steel mill of the Ajokuta steel complex to be able to produce iron rods. To be able to uh, revamp the entire plant based on estimates from experts that I've spoken to and that we've looked at, will cost about two to five billion US dollars. Um, now, 
the light steel section mill of Ajokuta steel plant um, is going to cost us about 35 billion naira. Mr. President gave me approval uh, sometime late last year to raise the money locally to be able to revive that section of the steel plant. Now, if you look at what the Ministry of Works is trying to do, um, I've been in touch with him. We're working very closely and collaboratively. The federal government, under the Renewed Hope Agenda, plans to build about 30,000 kilometers of roads across the six geopolitical zones. That would require about 7 million metric tons over the first four years of this administration. Ajokuta has capacity to produce 400,000 tons. Presently in the country, yeah. all the steel used at the iron rods used for our road construction are imported. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, there's some local production that is being done, but a, a small fraction. There's some local production. Most of the local production that is being done are, used, um, are, are being done using scrap metals. Um, so most of the, of the companies and the developers prefer to have them imported. So a larger chunk, uh, billions of dollars is spent on steel importation into Nigeria, which the president wants to uh, reverse. So if I may quickly ask, in, in all of this, um, over the years, uh, you say scrap, but the, the, uh, if you revitalize the light uh, steel, uh, mill. steel mill, yes. uh, from what natural resource would that come, raw material would that come from? So part of, part of what um, we plan to do is, um, so there are two ways to approach it. One is to, um, is to mine the iron ore. And uh, once we mine the iron ore and the other natural uh, resources like limestone, dolomite, cooking coal. Which we have in Kogi, yes, which in, we have in, in several Kogi, states of the federation. In the federation. central region. region. You can also um, use that, um, get a blast furnace to be able to now convert that into iron rods. However, um, part of what we plan to do is to import the billets and then roll those billets into iron rods. That's a second, a second approach. I think that's a quicker method of approaching or solving the problem on day one. Of getting resolved. production going. Yeah. Now, we've also done the analysis. Using that approach is much cheaper than, significantly more cheaper than um, importing the finished iron rods into the country. I think based on the analysis that was done, we'll, we'll save about 500 billion so naira over four how years. How soon can this light steel mill get uh, produce its first iron rods? I, I think um, if we're lucky, if we have um, the support of all the parties, and if we work very hard, we're targeting to have that come out this year, uh, before the end of this year. And Mr. President is determined to have us do that. So that well, you need very the 35 billion yes, we need support the, fund we need the to, get it, to, get, to get it up to scratch. Yes, Mr. President has said that we should raise the money from the money market locally. We've spoken to various financial institutions who have shown significant amount of interest in giving us the money. In fact, we have quite a number of term sheets on the table already. Um, so we should be able to get that off the ground very quickly. So if 35 billion naira is needed to get the, the light mail uh, uh, section, started, yes. section of the Ajakuta, how much annually do you hope to get out of uh, that mail? So if, if we're able to... In revenue. So the 35 billion naira would help us to make about 50,000 tons of, of the iron. iron rods that is required. Now it has capacity to go up to 400,000 tons. If we now ramp up to 400,000 tons, now we have an offtake agreement with the Ministry of Works, and like I mentioned, that wants to create about um, uh, 30,000 kilometers of roads across Nigeria. There are also other you know, companies that you know, are building bridges, you know, state governments, companies that are building you know, um, houses and all of that, that that needs iron rods and, and steel. So we think that we could generate hundreds of billions of naira in profit. In, 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 in uh, empirical terms, as yes. a private sector person, yeah. coming from the private sector, if you are collecting a facility credit from uh, a, a, as a capital rate, yeah. you definitely are going to have done your mathematics in what, what the return on investment will be. Yes. Uh, so in, in actual terms, if you take, let's say, the, 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 the mid capacity, yeah. if you produce to mid capacity, 
would you be meeting? What what is uh, the return on investment? What is the figure exactly that you are looking at? So annually. So if for this thirty five billion naira worth of um, money that yeah. that we're raising. For the 50,000 tons, by the time we sell it at the prevailing international market price, perhaps we'll sell it slightly below so that there's some spread and there's still some discount from, you know, there's some incentive to buy from us. Um, at that 35 billion, we should be able to make about 40 to 50 billion in terms of returns um, on investment. So that's about to, a margin of about 10 to 15 billion yeah. uh, in terms of the disparity between the, the money spent and the... the the, the, the profit are correct for that 50,000 tons. However, if we ramp up to 400,000 tons, that goes significantly upwards by about you know eight times or so from from the numbers that, so that, that is the immediate at, yeah. target that your ministry has, correct? And that is what the agenda of this government is all about. Yes. But you've not told us what exactly is the problem of 45 years. What has this government identified as a problem of the 45 years old? I think part of the issue has been, you know, there's been no political will. This is the first time in our 63-year history since independence that the federal government, that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has created a steel <coughs> ministry. He understands that the Industrial Revolution would hinge on the Ministry of Steel. Um, there's been some concession arrangements that was done in the past where the concessionaires that were brought in didn't have the competence and the skill required to be able to um, carry out the job. Um, so those were some of the challenges. And the iron ore that was supposed to be used for the production of the steel was actually being imported out of the country by the previous uh, concessionaires. So we had so many challenges and the agreements was not done in the interest of Nigeria. For example, um, the last concession, concession agreement that was done with Global Steel was terminated and we had to pay about $496 million uh, to the Indian company that, um, you know, that that concession agreement was terminated with. So, so these are some of the challenges. So in all of this, as anyone, because this is a similar case of contractual uh, deal uh, uh, pushing the, the, the federal government into misstep, and at the end of the day, the federal government makes these mistakes and errors, and then the federal government, the Nigerian uh, people, through the taxpayers' money, will have to pay back those P and ID cases. One very case that is very evident: mm. has anybody been found worthy of punishment for these misdeeds? Well, I, I think it's um, you know these are these are things that have happened uh, through successive governments. Um, there are commissions. Um, of inquiries that have been set up by um, successive governments, and, and I believe those things um, have, have been looked into and they will continue to be looked into. I think that ultimately, you know, there has to be consequences for some of these things that were not done. But are we out of the woods contractually? Are we, are we, are yes, we we're out, out of, of the woods? Yes, we're out, out of, of the woods. That $496, $500 million rough, roughly a payment that we made has allowed Ajokuta to be sort of free from any major so Ajokuta is now a Nigerian company yes, owned, is com owned is by the federal government. Owned by the federal government, yes. 100%. Yes. But the steel company is still 98% complete. It was 98% complete uh, by the early 90s, by 1994. However, um, the technology has not been updated. Some of the um, equipments you know, were carted away by, you know, some of the people that were managing the plants previously. So a lot of work um, needs to be done. And we started that process. Um, we've, we've gone on tours, um, you know, globally to international steel plants. We've seen companies that are actually producing steel. Whatever company that the um, plant is concession to um, has to have capacity to be able to um, you know, get steel production coming out of, of Ajokuta ultimately. Successive governments have uh, spent allocated billions to Ajokuta, leading to a cumulative project cost of 49 billion naira. Is that the same figures that you have? That's been a money gossler. Minister, budget allocations to Ajokuta still include 3.9 billion in 2016, 4.27 billion in 2017, 4.2 billion in 2020, 108 million as export expansion grant in 2019. In, in estimate, if you are counting our loss, 
This money goes like Kola Jokuta. How much has gone into it? Do we have a figure? Uh, uh, you know, uh, Shell, what I would say, right, is that if we start recounting all the problems that have happened in the last 45 years, we're not going to make any progress. Mr. President, like I mentioned, is a visionary. He looks forward. And Nigeria is a country that has had many problems in the past. We have the capacity to be able to turn around some of these things. We want to get Ajokuta producing. Ajokuta is a massive plant that if we get some of the low-hanging fruits producing, some of the production units, some of the production plants they're producing, even when we bring a, a company to handle the concession, the pricing would be much higher. So it's in the interest of Nigeria for us to invest in getting Ajokuta back on track somewhat. Now, the light steel mill alone that um, we are looking to revive would create about 5,000 direct and indirect jobs for Nigerians. If we revive the plant in its entirety and carry out some of the other initiatives that we are carrying out with bringing in new steel plants and international companies um, to set up uh, steel plants, we would create northwards of you know, 500,000 jobs and bringing in excess of $10 billion in foreign direct investment. So Mr. President is looking forward. And you know, if we're able to bring that amount of money into Nigeria, it's going to be a game changer. Hmm. So in, in all of this right now, uh, there's still a lot of issues. We, uh, uh, few, we, which there was that, that we understand that the, the TCN disconnected. It was last Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah. That TCN disconnected as you could have seen from the national grid. Has that been resolved? Um, well, um, just because they said they've not paid debt of 33 billion owed to the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC. Uh, just, just for clarity, it hasn't actually been disconnected. There was a letter, um, sort of a warning letter that was that was sent to Ajokuta. I spoke to the MD of Ajokuta again today. Um, we had a conversation. Um, just to quickly provide a summary of what, of what happened, um, about $9 billion is what is actually being owed in electricity tariffs over the last 10 years to NBET. Now, the interest element on that $9 billion is about $24 billion. What were they using the light for? The electricity, since they were producing nothing. Well, you know, it's it's not that they were producing nothing. You know, it's a Did massive. They produce anything. Yeah, yeah. They 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 had some concessionaires in there that were managing the plant, and some production activities was happening on a small scale, not Doing on a large what? scale. What were they producing? So they tried to, um, the, for example, the engineering workshop, you know, was being used to produce some plates, and all of that. Um, the, they had uh, uh, produced some rebars uh, previously in, in, in the past and things like that, you know, on a, on a small scale. It wasn't so they were done, just running whatever, well, on a, yes, on, just uh, to the, do some uh, almost, activities. Almost, yeah, activities that are largely irrelevant to the, uh, to the global picture. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but on a small scale that is not significant enough to impact the big picture. And they've accrued this kind of debt. And, they've accrued, and they are unable to pay it. And, and they've been unable to pay it so far. However, however, you know, in my discussions with the MD of Ajokuta, part of the solution that we're trying to put on board is that there is a power plant there, about a 110 megawatt power plant. We need to do some financial engineering to be able to resolve the problem. So part of what we're going to do is to reach a PPP partnership. That's, that's part of what we're thinking about, to do a public-private partnership to be able to um, do that on the power plant. If we're able to do that on the power plant and hand it over to a private company that pays us some significant amount of money, we can now use that to pay uh, most of the debt, if not all of the debt, and still have some money accrued to Ajokuta. So some financial engineering and thinking outside the box is what is required to solve the problem. So by December this year, Honorable Minister, I, if I call you back onto this program, we still, we, we sh you should be able to report to Nigerians that we are producing from the light mill. Absolutely. That if is we a have, promise to If Nigeria. we have the support of, you know, Nigerians. But no, 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 look at the camera. Yes. Look, this, this, you're looking straight into the yes. camera yes. and you're talking to Nigerians. Yes. If you make this promise tonight, yes. we are, today is the 15th day of January yes. and the Tunubu government under your leadership in the Ministry of State Development is making promise to Nigerians 
that the curse of 45 years will be broken this year by the Tinubu government by you getting up to scratch and producing steel from Ajakuta. Yes. Is that a promise? Yes, that's, that's, that's the plan. But I want you to, you know, I, I always believe in, in under-promising and over-delivering. So part of what I, I, don't want, I don't want us to, I don't want us to, you know, put a specific, you know, um, timeline to say Nigerians were. What I'm trying to tell you is that we're doing everything humanly possible and we're poised to produce steel in the form of iron rods from Ajokuta before the end of the year. We should That's hold the you commitment. accountable to Yes. That. And you can hold me accountable. I wish you the very best. Yes. To the interest of Nigeria, yes. if this works, there's been a lot of disappointment over the years. Uh, and if this happens, it will be a plus to Nigerians, not only to this government, but to Nigerians, because Nigerians are supposed to be the one to benefit. There's been yeah. failures for 45 years. Yeah. If that is broken, yeah. it will be good news. But then, we understand now that uh, there is a plan for, to, uh, to, to start another company, a, a steel company, yes. uh, from the scratch. Now, there are those who have their fears. Uh, even Ajokuta, for example, there are those experts who had criticized that there, were, there was not a, a proper plan of how the steel was going to be transported out of this. Steel is a heavy commodity, mm -hmm. uh, commodity if, when it's produced. So the Ajakuta lacked the infrastructure to be able to, uh, to transport whatever that is produced. Have you been able to resolve that? Yes. Um, so let me just touch quickly and, and address the issue on Ajakuta, and then I'll talk about the new steel companies that are looking to come into Nigeria. In terms of Ajokuta, part of what we're doing in addition to restarting the light steel mill is we want to produce military hardwares in Ajokuta steel. I've been working very closely with the Minister of Defense, Alhaji Badaru, and the Minister of Work, Senator Umahi, to work hand in hand to produce iron rods in Ajokuta and to build military, produce military hardware cap capabilities in Ajokuta, whether it's helmets, whether it's bullets, whether it's vests, whether it's parts for tanks and ships and all of those things, or rifles, ammunition, we have capacity to be able to do all of that. So part of what we are going to do is that once we raise this money and start on a small scale and show a proof of concept, then we can then ramp up. For the military hardware capacity, we are going to restart the engineering workshop in Ajokuta to be able to get it back on track and to be able to design and build things for military hardware. And it's important for us to... But that's not the to... original plan. This is a hard arc. No, that's... This, that... is, this, is, this is a side step to, to what, what the, the larger plan was. So the question is, how effective would this be? No, it would be very effective. It's not... It's, it's, is like I mentioned because earlier. Because you're using it for what it wasn't designed for. No, it was. It was, it was designed, I mean, it's, it's still steel. It's still steel production in one way, form, shape, or the other. You know, it, there are multiple ways to skin a cat. You know, it's not just one size fits approach for everything. You know, so part of what we are doing, like I mentioned, is we're thinking outside the box. We're being innovative. We're looking at solutions that will serve Nigerians and ensure that we implement the Renewed Hope agenda of Mr. President. If we're able to do that, we'll create tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of jobs for Nigerians. You know, tax payments will be significantly more, employment opportunities, the industry would now be robust, will turn it around and create um, a new life and breathe a new life into the steel industry, something that hasn't been done since independence. We've never had a steel ministry you know, for over 60 years of our, of our independence, this is the first time the president has, has done that. So this new idea of creating a brand new steel company, you've gone to China on a road show. Yes. About, but in, in all of this, why create a new steel company when you have one that is nearly moribund for 45 years? You are trying to restart anyways. You know, um, you, can, you can use multiple approaches. You don't have to only use one approach. And steel production is never enough for a country like Nigeria. Mr. President wants Nigeria to be the China of Africa. You know, a country that that's has... That's Tinubu's plan. Yes, that's Tinubu's plan, yes. That Nigeria will be the China of the continent. When I say, when I say China of the continent... In the sense I mean of production. In terms of industrial development. 
industrial development, industrial production, you know, the growth of the economy, the size of the economy. He wants the economy to grow to $1 trillion by the end of his second term in 2031. He wants to create 80 million jobs by the end of 2031. He has big plans for Nigeria. And part of the implementation process of those massive plans is through the steel ministry, which is why we've gone to China. We've met with the senior executives of the Luan Steel Group, the group chairman, the group chief executive officer. They've committed to come to Nigeria. They are coming to Nigeria after the Chinese New Year. They are willing and able, and they've committed to investing billions of dollars in setting up a new steel plant. Part of what I have to do um, as the Ministry of Steel is to be able to start to do the groundwork in terms of finding land, finding a place that has capacity in terms of, you know, um, in terms of a deep sea port, in terms of availability of gas, in terms of all the relevant facilities to be able to move the heavy facilities as well. You mentioned the heavy facilities in, in Ajokuta. I wanted to mention that in Ajokuta, there is a rail line, you know, that, that takes us, you know, um, from Ajokuta all the way to um, Itakwe and even beyond that to Alaja in Delta State. Is that completed now? Yes, it's is 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 me is what a cargo is it a cargo uh, is an industrial rail yes that can carry the capacity of the commodity that it's going to be produced. yes correct that's what that's what it is is an is an industrial scale and we can build multiple more plants because Nigerians are hungry for job opportunities there are tens of millions of Nigerians without job which Mr President wants to address and wants to get a massive amount of Nigerians employed within the next four to eight years. And he's poised to do it, and will do it by the special grace of God, because he has the right team in place where, where you know, we're, we're having the right conversations, we're having the right energy, we're, we're, we're having the right conversations. So the, the Chinese company is coming to invest in Nigeria. The Indian company, Jindal Steel, is also coming to Nigeria. They've committed to invest five billion dollars at the sidelines of the G20 uh, meeting in September 2023, which Mr. President attended in Delhi, India. I've met with their representatives in Nigeria, and they've committed and they've shown me their level of seriousness. You know, we're looking at various locations for both the um, Chinese and Indian companies. It may be somewhere, it could be through an acquisition of an existing plant, like in Alaja, the Delta Steel. It could be a greenfield location, like in Akwaibom, or you know, somewhere in the southwest, like in Ogun State. There are various options that we're looking at on the table. It's not just Ajokuta. We can, we can solve Ajokuta while creating other opportunities for the government, because Mr. President is hell-bent and is determined to industrialize Nigeria. So, but it may not be, those two other companies from the Indian and the Chinese uh, perspective may not be in the, in the capacity of Ajakuta. Because Ajakuta was uh, created to be, uh, to be the largest in sub-Saharan Africa. But, I mean... Yes, those, 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 those Chinese people, for example, when we went to China, the companies that, the, the Luan Steel Group, their companies has a potential of um, producing about 20 million metric tons of steel. Ajokuta has a capacity, Ajokuta was designed to produce 1.3 million metric tons of steel in year one, which would double to um, 3.6 million metric tons. So the Chinese and the Indians could well create a steel company that could be bigger than Ajokuta, potentially. The issue of banditry yes. and the nexus with mining in, in this country, are you worried about it? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big worry, it's a big concern. Uh, but before I, I, I talk to that now, um, one thing I wanted to mention is that if you look at the combined uh, projects and pipelines that we have, including the um, Chinese investments from Lua Steel Group, the Indian investments from Jindal Steel, the cons potential concessions of Ajokuta together with the iron rod production and the production of military hardware, we could bring in in excess, we are poised to bring in in excess of 10 billion US dollars into Nigeria, which I mentioned earlier. And that's, that's a, FDI. A, yes, FDI, foreign direct investment. Which so you're is planning to concession Ajakuta? It, it's, it's, it's something that is on the table. 
it's we're looking at all options government to resolve has the problem. Yeah, so no one would think that the government will be able to be reasonable enough to be able to run at Yankuta going forward. I mean, there are those who will say PPP will be the way to go. But put it in private hands and make them accountable to plow the money from uh, in, I mean the, the part the portion for the Nigerian gov I mean Nigerian people to go back into the Nigerian uh, purse. Yes, but the concession would also be concession to a private company that has the capacity to and skill it. set for steel production, right? So the government is going to um, take their hands off it. Although government will ultimately still have a residual stake in the in the plant. Yes. All right. Quickly, I, I asked about uh, the mining and banditry. Yes. So the in terms of the mining and the the the, the banditry, it's a it's a concern. Um, there's some, you know, I even received a letter from one of the um, MDs of one of my agencies today in Niamco that um, he was concerned about some banditry and some illegal mining that was even taking place at um, you know some of our government-owned properties. Um, and government-owned uh, production plants in Itakbe, in Kogi State, and the likes. And Mr. President is very concerned about that. And there was a report that came out recently that Mr. President is setting up some special police uh, units to focus on, you know, illegal mining and some illegal activities that have been taking place. I believe the president is very serious about that. Once those types of measures are put in place, and those are the types of measures that mm. we need to resolve the problem, and Mr. President is very determined to fix Nigeria. Is, is, does this government think that there is a reason linked to the mining and why banditry is on the rise? That those who will say that some of the high and powerful are connected to this issue just to exploit mining processes? Do you well, think so? Well, it's a complicated process, right? And I don't want to speak too much on that because these are security issues. Um, but, but what I would say, I think the, the bottom line of what I would say is that Mr. President is very concerned about this trend. It's a trend in terms of banditry, is a, is a concerning trend in terms of the illegal mining that is happening, is a concerning trend in terms of cutting away the natural resources of Nigeria through illegal means. And it's happening all over the country, in places with, whether it's coal mining, um, you know, whether it's gold mining, all sorts of things. It's happening all over Nigeria. It's happening in Kogi, it's happening in Zamfara, it's happening in different uh, 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 locations. And Mr. President is concerned about solving uh, mm -hmm. these problems. And I believe he'll solve it. Uh, very quickly in the in the very near future. I wish you the very best. Thank Ambitious you. plan and the agenda in this sector. I can only wish uh, your ministry and Thank this you. government very well because at the end of the day, if there are benefits that come out of this, is for the interest of Nigerians. And I wish you the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Sure. Prince uh, Shoaibu Abubakar Audu, the Honourable Minister for Steel Development. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight.